Hi and welcome to the Enquendo Guitars Workshop. My name is Daniel and this is a follow-up video on last week's Q&A in which I received a ton of questions about headstock brake angles and neck brake angles and when or whether to use it or not. So if you also struggle to figure out your brake angles, yeah, keep watching because in this video I'm going to explain to the best of my abilities how I figure these things out. So let's dive straight in. In order for me to explain headstock and neck brake angles, I'm going to take a look at my computer and my guitar design, and that's something you will need to do. Uh, everyone will tell you, you will need to make a full-size drawing of your guitar, especially when you want to figure out things like a neck and headstock brake angle. And you most likely start with a top-down view of your guitar, so your body and your neck, and make it as accurate as you can. And then the next step will be making a side view of your guitar and I've already prepared a section of the neck and what I did was I took my top view and draw some reference lines straight down for example for the end of the neck for the end of the fretboard where the nut is going to be and also for all the frets and I made sure my entire side view is again true scale and correct. So I have a 6 millimeter uh, thick uh, fretboard. My frets are correct. Uh, the height of my string where I drawn in my string is exactly how it would be when the guitar is set up. So there's a very tiny gap, almost no gap at all at the first fret. And there's a yeah, string height of one and a half millimeter at the 12 fret. So it's exactly how the neck would be when the guitar is set up. And as you can see, I haven't drawn in the headstock yet. And that's what I'm going to do now to explain you the headstock break angle. There's one reference line I'm going to need. And that's the reference line for the end of the headstock. So I'm going to draw this in. And now for the angle itself. The angle of the headstock doesn't really matter. It depends on, for example, the thickness of your neck blank or yeah, it could be anything you want it to be. Usually headstock break angles are in between the 10 and 15 degrees. So let's draw in a line and I'll show you. You can use just any random line. For example, I'm going to do this and just a random angle for my uh, top of the headstock. I always like it when my strings are parallel to the top of the headstock. So I'm going to copy this line and make it into a string. And now it's my string. So uh, the strings are running nice and parallel to the top of the headstock. The main purpose of the entire break angle of the neck is to create uh, additional string tension here at the nut. So to keep the string in place in the nut slot when playing the guitar. So the next thing I need to do is figure out the thickness of my headstock. And therefore I go online and find myself a drawing a very detailed drawing of the tuners I want to use in this case Hipshot and Hipshot is one of those manufacturers that have very accurate drawings and here we can see these locking tuners come in four different lengths 19 millimeters for the shaft length uh, from the back of the headstock or the bottom of the housing to the tiny hole the string goes through and this is the dimension I'm looking for also, Hipshot states um, the maximum headstock thickness uh, for the 19 millimeter tuner. It's 14.7 millimeters and a minimum headstock thickness of 12.7. I'm going to go with a somewhat standard 20 millimeter version. And yeah, then the headstock can be a max thickness of 15.7 millimeters. And from the back of the headstock to the little tiny hole is 20 millimeters. 
back into AutoCAD. What I need is a line running from somewhere around here to the string and I want it to be perpendicular to that string. And this is a trick in AutoCAD you can use, but of course when you're doing this with pen and paper you can use a protractor or a drawing triangle to get a line perpendicular to your string. And I want this line to be exactly 20 millimeters long. So this is now the height of my tuner and that means the end of this line should be the back of my headstock. Again I want this line to run parallel, so I'm going to copy this line to the end of this line and this gives me my headstock thickness. I can measure this thickness from here to here and it's 12.32 so it's a little uh, too thin but I'm going to add a cap, a 2 mm thick veneer to the top of this headstock. And here we have it, and now my headstock is 14.3 millimeters thick, so oh, that's perfect. And to finalize my drawing I go to trim off the axis, and you can use an eraser if you like. Remove this, and I'm going to finalize my volute. And I'm not being very precise, it's just to give you an idea. And this is now my correct headstock thickness and angle. Let's take a look at the neck break angle next. With the headstock break angle sorted out we can take a look at the neck break angle. And I've drawn in my string at the exact scale length. So the next thing I need to know is the string height required for the bridge I'm going to use. And again I'm going to go online to a manufacturer's page. Again, Hipshot, because I like to use Hipshot products and they have very good information on the website. And here I can see for this particular bridge the minimum string height should be 0.3 of an inch, so around about 8 millimeters. And the maximum string height is 0.47 inch, so that's just over 12 millimeters, uh, somewhat uh, around there. And what I like to do is set my string height for uh, my guitar design right in the center, so in this case 10 millimeters. So I'm going to design my guitar with a string spacing from the face of the guitar to the top of the bridge uh, at 10 millimeters. So back to my drawing. So what I'm going to do is draw in a line at the scale length 10 millimeters straight down. And now I know the end of this line, and let's move it to the center of the screen, the end of this line uh, is the face of my body. So now I can draw in my body, and I like my bodies to be flush with the fretboard. So I'm going to start at the fretboard, to this line, and now I'm going to extend this line all the way to the back. And this is the face of my body right now. And I can see if there's an angle, but I don't think so. No, it's 180 degrees. So for a hip shot bridge uh, with my fretboard thickness and my frets and my string setup, I don't need any break angle uh, on my neck. But what if you wanted to use, uh, for example, a non-recessed Floyd Rose tremolo or a tunomatic bridge? Well, then you have to 
figure out the string height required for that bridge. And usually for a tunomatic bridge, that will be 18 millimeters. So I'm going to lengthen this line to 18 millimeters. And now I have two choices. I can do exactly the same as I did with the previous uh, bridge. I can draw in a line to the end of my fretboard. But as we can see from the top view, my body ends here. This is where the neck will touch the body. So if I extended this line all the way to the body, you can see it will cover up the fretboard, which, is, which isn't very nice. So in this case, what you have to do is plane down your body at an angle so it's flush with the fretboard. And this is how it's done on a Les Paul, for example. The other option you have is to draw this line to where the neck meets the body. And this is also a good option, but it leaves a little wedge of your neck material visible on the guitar. So it's more an aesthetic thing than anything else. So this is the break angle you need for a tunomatic or a float rose uh, bridge. Let's lengthen this line a bit to represent the body better. And once you've figured this out, and I can remove this line, you now have your break angle without any difficult calculations or mathematic or something. And I can see how great this angle is. It's just over two degrees. Very precise, 2.06 um, degrees. And this kind of precision is very hard to do when you want to calculate it or do it uh, from the top of your head. Now let's take a look at how this looks when you finalized your drawing. And I prepared to. So this is a placeholder for a hip shot bridge. So the 10 millimeter string height from the body. And I've drawn in my entire body. And you can see I can route a straight neck pocket for example. And I've got a nice uh, action on my string. And this is for the tunomatic style bridge. And you can see I have my angle, my break angle for the neck. I also choose to uh, plane my body at an angle and route the neck pocket at the same angle. So I first plane down my body as far as I need it, attach the template and then route my neck pocket as usual and it will be at the correct angle straight away. There are many tips on how to do this uh, already on YouTube. So I hope this helped you uh, yeah, figure out your break angles and how to make a side view of your guitar. Now that we've seen how I theoretically figure out all the break angles on my guitars, it's also a good thing to keep in mind how you go about making the actual guitar. I always mention that you have to take in a certain uh, margin of error when building your guitar. So don't route your neck pocket to the correct uh, depth or the needed depth immediately. Always leave one or two millimeters of extra material. You can route away later and the same goes with the heel of the neck. Keep it a bit too thick and you can use a plane or some sandpaper to adjust it uh, accordingly. So let's hop back into the computer and this time I'm going to use a 3D model and show you how I correct and measure the break angles on my neck while I'm building the guitar. So yeah, let's dive straight in. So yeah, when building the, the guitar and you want to check your, ang uh, your angle, you're going to need a straight edge and a ruler or the actual bridge or uh, a template or a block of wood with the same height uh, you want your bridge to be. So place your straight edge in the center of your neck 
on the frets and take your ruler and measure the height from the bottom of the guitar to the underside of your straight edge, in this case just over 8 millimeters. You can slide your ruler back and forth and if the measurement between the body and the underside of your straight edge is the same everywhere, you know you're nice and straight. As you can see at the moment in this example, there's a tiny gap in between the straight edge and the saddles of the bridge. So this would be perfect. And I usually do this by going back and forward, just sand down or plane down very carefully, a small section of the heel, measure it, do it again uh, until I'm at where I want to be. And I've got a, an entire video explaining this process uh, on my YouTube channel, of which I will put a link in the description down below. So I hope you got some useful information from this video. And although I struggled with my English a little during recording uh, at the computer, uh, yeah, I still hope you liked this video. And if you did and you got some useful information, let me know by hitting that like button. And if you have any questions, suggestions, comments, yeah, leave them in the comment section down below. If you happen to be new to my channel, please consider subscribing and hit that little notification bell so you get notified when I upload something new. Speaking of something new, next week's video will be an unboxing video of some uh, stuff I received from Crimson Guitars and also some announcements about the great guitar build off 2021 that's coming to a close real soon. So yeah, keep an eye out for that one. I hope to see you there. But until then, have a nice week.